and we just did the Women in the Military Memorial, so I had some questions for JD. Oh boy. <laughs> Join me today on Walk With History as we talk about the women who serve from Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. So right behind me is the Women's Memorial here at Arlington National Cemetery. This memorial is to represent all the women that have served in the armed forces. So this is here to commemorate women today, women of yesterday, women in the future who have served in the United States military. And inside of here is a museum dedicated to the women. So we're at the grave of Ruth Bader Ginsburg with her husband, Martin. And you can see Arlington House in the background. She's in the Supreme Court section. So a lot of Supreme Court justices are over here. Most notably, Thurgood Marshall is kind of diagonally behind her. Ruth Bader Ginsburg did a lot for military women. She is the one who passed the law that if you marry a military person, you get to keep your own BAH. You don't have to just have your husband's BAH. And she made it so military women were getting paid the same as men as well. Here I am with Mary Randolph, notable for the first person buried at Arlington, not just the first woman, the first person buried at Arlington. She actually lived a very long life. She's 65 years old. She dies in 1828. It says here she's a direct descendant of Pocahontas. Her cousin marries Thomas Jefferson. And then her cousin is the father of Mary Custis, who is Robert E. Lee's wife. So basically her cousin is Robert E. Lee's father-in-law. But she's famous in her own right, Mary Randolph. She writes a, like one of the first ladies' cookbooks. They say her cookbook is one of the most influential housekeeping books of the 19th century for women, connected to American history through Thomas Jefferson, through George Washington, through Robert E. Lee, and then also, and you know her distinctively, she has the brick wall around her. I think the only person to have that. I'm at the grave of Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. World War II, Korea, Vietnam. We had the same birthday, December 9th, except I'm not 1906, I'm 1977. But we had the same birthday, then January 1st, 1992. I guess I should plan out my life. Am I gonna die on Christmas and New Year's Day too? <laughs> but Grace Hopper is credited with so much that she did in the computer science world. And she came up with the term debugging a computer. And she came up with that term because she actually pulled a moth out of her computer. And so then used the word debug because she got the bug out. And the moth is in the Smithsonian. She was, a math, she was a mathematician professor, and she got an exemption to enlist in the waves in, the, in World War II because she did not meet the Navy's minimum weight requirement. She helped develop the computer language COBOL. I have used that myself, so thank you, Grace Hopper, for doing that. She retired in, in 1966. She retired again in 1971. They kept asking her to come back. Uh, she continued past retirement age in 1986, and she retired as a rear admiral. She's the, as the oldest active duty commissioned officer at the age of 79 years old. When she died in 92, 1992, she was given full military honors here at Arlington National Cemetery. So it's an honor to visit her here in Arlington National Cemetery. We're, we're in section 59. Thank you for your service. And thank you for what you did for computer languages and for women in the military. I am honored to visit you today. in the registry here. How awesome is that? I need to put my mom in. My mom was the first female military police officer in Aviano, Italy. Yes, yeah, so I need to put her in here. And you can enter her and then she can go in. I will do that. She'll be so proud. She was Air Force, but I forgive her. <laughs> Serving in the military 19 
1901 to 1945. This is where you're gonna have wax. Here we go, wasps. This is, this is some of my favorite stuff, the women who flew and joined the military in the 1940s. So tons of artifacts here. Uniforms, military posters, dog tags, guidebooks. So the waves of the US, the US Navy Women's Reserve and then a WAC is a Women's Army Corps. I need to stand here with these women because it says girl pilots. So here I'm a, I'm a girl pilot and stand with these women. I always appreciate the women who came before, who broke ground before. So this goes into women serving in aviation. I love it. Women Air Force Service pilots, the WASPs. And you got their flight books. You have them doing their flight calculations. And you got the nurses corps over here. But this is an iconic photo, these four women with their flight jackets on. Uh, looks like they're coming back from a flight. But I love all these pictures. Look, <laughs> talking aviation. When you got your two hands out like that, you know you're talking aviation, you're usually talking form flying. And this is overseas with the military, women overseas. So I'm talking about being prisoners of war in Guam. Again, uniforms. Very cool. She's working on a, a helicopter. She's working on a Seahawk helicopter for Wolfpack. She's working on the rotor, I can tell. I can see the rotor. This is the first woman, woman who made it through Ranger School. Yeah, look at, she's like running, she's fireman carrying someone with a cable in her hand. Korean War. Treating the wounded. It's about women who served in Vietnam. I like that one with the gladiator. And a timeline. We've got Harry Tetman over here. So I had a great day today. I got to spend time with JD from History Underground. We really did a video centering around women and women in service, and we just did the women in the military memorial. So I had some questions for JD. Oh boy. <laughs> So what, how, what's your feeling about women who serve in the military? I, I think that whenever you are, are looking at, at the, the military in general, how, how can you dismiss half of the human population? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's awesome. And, and going through the, the Women's Military Museum or Memorial here, uh, you really get to see you know, some of the amazing contributions mm -hmm. that have been made that may have not been made otherwise sure uh, so so yeah I, I think it's it's an amazing thing and uh, yeah hopefully people come here yeah and and learn a little bit more about the uh, the contributions of uh, of women in our military have you has your opinion kind of like changed as you've learned more and seen more about what women have done or did I wouldn't say that it, it's changed but I've become more enlightened as cool. to yeah. you know some of the the different contributions. It's it's you know a continual process of learning sure. and 
Maybe maybe I should say this. I, I've gained a greater appreciation the more I've learned. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. JD was recognized in here too. I have yet to be recognized, but he he kind of brought me along in the recognition. So maybe it was like a, a half of recognition. Yeah. But well, that was awesome. Yeah. Awesome to see him be a part of. Well, thank you. We had right, a great thanks. day today. So thank you. Absolutely. So as I leave Arlington National Cemetery, I face this way because a lot of times the, this side of the tombstone has the spouses or the women or if you're dual military, people who also served with you as Mary Randolph Collins right here. Every other person is a woman and what women have contributed to the military, to service, to Armed Forces is just immeasurable. And I wanted to bring some recognition to them today. And I'm proud to be one of them. And I'm proud to pass the baton on to the next generation of women. So thank you to my fellow women. Thank you to my fellow service women. And I hope you enjoyed this video. On to my next Walk With History.